Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk about these. So, um, what are these? Well, I needed to build a, a riser stand for a project. And so the quickest way I decided to do is whip up some 3D printed legs. And what these legs do is they just slip on to this uh, three-quarter inch melamine board, as you see here. Now, this isn't the exact the one I'm going to use for the the uh, riser, but it it's, was small enough. It was just kind of a cutout that fit underneath the camera, and you could get the idea. So, because the other one will have the edges banded and, and everything. But what happens is these just slide on. It's a pressure fit. Now, what I've done is I've got holes in the top of these um, to put screws in. But before we get to here, one of the things uh, I want to do is jump into the computer a little bit, show you how I design these up, and then let's come back for the to the bench for some final thoughts. I was uh, posed with a bit of a challenge by my wife to come up with a monitor riser stand, and so wanted to do something uh, that was kind of cool, a little bit different, and so I came up with uh, these um, uh, riser stands, and so I uh, kind of wanted to share how I came up with them because I actually used Inkscape to create these, and they're they're rather simple. But uh, before we get into the, kind of disassembling these, let's jump over to Inkscape and take a quick look at what I did first, and then we'll we'll jump back over here and take a look at how I assembled them. So I've got two builds in Inkscape, and what I did is assembled a basic round triangle. Now I sort of could have done this in in uh, Tinkercad, it's been a little bit more difficult. So I wanted to start with the base image, so I just kind of whipped this up real quick in Inkscape, and as you can see, just some primitive objects. And then what happens when we do a union to this, this is what we come up with. And so the, also, I will kind of want to share a couple different pieces. So we have the raw object here. Now I kept this so I could tweak this, and, and I usually keep uh, two sets of Inkscape drawings, a version one and a version two. The version one is usually the ununioned product. And so uh, what we do in Inkscape is if we select this and then we go up to pass and then we select union, as you see, this creates this. But now one of the challenges we have is if I want to uh, alter this for other purposes, well, then I've got to start all over again. So I always keep a blank version of this one, not really a blank version, but an unjoined version of this. And then when I do the union, I save it off. I do uh, go up here and then just do save as or save a copy and create my new one. So now this is the uh, this is the the rounded triangle that I created as my base for Tinkercad. So now if we pop back into Tinkercad, you'll notice that's sort of what these guys are. Now, how do we get this in? Well, we use our friend over here, our import function. So I've already selected the file. Uh, I've already chosen the file here by cho choose file, and you can see I've got rounded triangle version 2, which is my second version. And the other piece that uh, OpenSCAD does is give, sorry, not OpenSCAD, this is the wrong channel for that. Uh, Tinkercad allows us to do is to also provide a height. Now, we really don't have to give it much of an end height um, at the beginning because we can change that later. So I'm just going to leave it at 10. And then I'm going to do an import. And then what's going to happen is going to import, and it's like, whoa, look at this. Now, one of the things I kind of want to call your attention to is if we look down here, for example, 391 and 388. And if we go back here to, if I find the right place, uh, if we look up here, let me select the object first. And you'll notice that these are sort of roughly these figures in, in, in pixels. And this is one of the, the problems with um, importing an SVG or a vector graphic file into um, uh, Tinkercad. It, is it gets confused a lot of times between pixels and uh, actual size. But this isn't a really a big problem because if we want to go back and so say let's we go over here and then we switch it to, to millimeters, you'll see I'm at 103 and, and 103. So we can simply go back to Tinkercad and uh, enter 103 and uh, 103, and we have now rescaled ours. So that's kind of another important tip that I would share, 
is always always remember your perspective from your object or if you lose perspective of the object you can go and take it back since these are matching since this is actually just half of a square uh, you know it, it they should be roughly the same they're a little bit off because of the corners uh, but I can just make it uh, square in inside of uh, Tinkercad so now that we have this object um, this size so we can again change it so I only kept a perspective of the uh, Inkscape so if we want to change this to 50 by 50 we can do that and if I just get the right 50 in here so we do that and then um, if we want it thicker than that a 10 we can just go 25 and then we can spin this around and, and again you can kind of see we have our, our base that we've used to build this now what I've simply done is I've gone up here and I've done the duplicate command so I now have a replica replica of it I almost said replicant a little uh, blade, ru blade runner I guess in the background and so I just hit the shift key and arrow and I turn this at a right angle and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this whoops I don't want to grab the I need to grab the arrow and I guess I'll give in and move it up a little bit why does that keep wanting to so we'll just spin this around at a, at a bit of an angle you may have to adjust that a little bit more but you kind of you'll you'll have the idea and I want to set this at zero so it, it's it's raised up and I want to spin this around a little bit more and so we'll just there we go and so we now align this in here and we set it back a little bit into the the piece and again we can come up with a couple different adjustments but you can kind of get the idea how this now comes together and uh, actually I'm going to just simply join these two and then do an align and then you kind of see we brought these together now I'm going to move this forward I'll just whoops a little bit so you get the you get the rough idea and that's how I came up with these shapes and then if I ungroup this you can see I've taken now my shelf and, and created a hole the size of my shelf and inserted it into the block. Now I'm going to just undo this so it goes back. Now the other piece that you notice that I've also done is I've placed a hole in here uh, for a screw that can come down. Now I've also left a blank version over here so as I have different size shelves uh, this, is, this is designed for a 3 quarter inch, inch thick shelf. I can just create another hole and place it in here for whatever size. I can also stretch these and change the size. So if I want a, a higher lift, now she wanted this roughly the size, a little bit more than a, a ream of paper because she had a monitor sitting on a ream of paper and she wanted it about that height. So that's that's why these are are the size they are. And so uh, again, they're a little bit artistic looking, and it's not just sort of like you have a rope block. Here you have some nice rounded corners and rounded edge for it to sit on. And so, so hopefully this is giving you some ideas how you can again take objects from uh, other programs, for example, like Inkscape, and import them into Tinkercad and come out with something new. So I tell you what, let's see how this actually works in the real world because that's part of the fun of this. So let's jump over to a quick time lapse of this printing out and then let's go to the bench and um, see how it all comes together. So I'll see you back at the bench. All right, welcome back. So as you saw, I whipped these up. I started the base concept of the rounded triangle in Inkscape, and then I just followed through with doubling it, placing one on top. And uh, you know, the pieces, as I mentioned in the uh, 
uh, you know, coverage when we're in the computer. You, you could scale these to a larger size if you want. So I, I don't need that much. I just need a couple inches about the height of a ream of paper to, to raise the monitor up off the desk. So this will work perfect um, and is kind of attractive. Now the other thing is I, I can see a lot of uses for this because um, with these pieces like this, I can drop the, the riser piece and these can be rounded edges for a desk that you've made out of melamine or something like that or shelves. Uh, basically anything you need to have a bumper edge. Uh, while these are printed out of PLA, you could also do these out of TPU to kind of make them more rubbery. Uh, I'm going to do some out of hips uh, because I really like how white the hips comes out uh, versus, you know, the natural. So uh, I, I like that idea. But all in all, this has really been a fun project and it's just kind of handy because it's one of those things. I can actually have a few of these thrown in a box and the second I need some sort of riser, boom, I just slap them on to the, to the three-quarter inch and, and I have a riser. So, uh, because the other thing I'm going to do is for my laser, uh, I've, I'm setting both of my lasers back up. Well, one's been set up and one I, I had had to move because I'm running out of room. So now I got things rearranged, but the way I have to arrange the laptop to drive both of them is uh, set it kind of in the middle of this shelving desk thing, which is not really level. So the idea is I'm going to take this and this will span the two desk areas and the laptop will go on it again. Not this, this is a little too small, but uh, it'll be a larger version of this and uh, it will allow me to put you know things underneath but yet have my laptop up here and also kind of raise up the height so it's a little bit easier for me to work on rather than being down lower so uh, again very excited about this build um, I think I'll throw these up on uh, actual Thingiverse too because I think they're kind of handy and these are just kind of cool um, I also put a link in there to the Tinkercad version of these where I've imported it so if you want to get those you can actually go into Tinkercad and you can ungroup them and uh, make them taller whatever you want if this doesn't fit your bill but uh, again I thought this was a neat handy build so hey if you did too uh, hit the like button also don't forget the swag shop in the corner and the subscribe button is going to come up over here so make sure you hit it if you're not already a subscriber and if you are a subscriber thank you for subscribing and we'll see you in the next video cheers please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on more